Yes, guys, you know what time it is. It's your boy, David, at the Irish Hotspur, Ireland's number one Spurs fan. And tonight we're presenting you Tell Me Your Spurs Story. And here with us tonight, we have Holly sharing her story. How are you keeping, Holly? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thanks. I'm all good, I'm all good. Yeah, and, you know, look, supporting Tottenham, you know, gives you plenty of highs and lows in there. And, you know, it creates bonds and friendships that will never break. But, you know, how did you get into supporting Tottenham? Um, so my dad was born in Chesham and um, he went after school to go watch him train. And that's kind of how he got into Tottenham. And then from there, I've just kind of taken it under my wing and thought, well, if he sports Spurs, I might as well. I mean, living in Southampton, I don't really fancy going to St Mary's to watch Southampton play. So Tottenham was probably the best team to support just because of his links with Spurs in general. So, yeah, that's that's why I support Tottenham. Yeah, that's a cool story. You used to go down after school and watch him train. That's mad. Yeah, and uh, of course, cool. you know, I, I, I regularly have Marcelo on my uh, on my channel, you, and you have more jerseys than what he does. <laughs> I know, I've kind of just been like, you know what, if I'm going to support this team, I might as well put my all in it, you know, so, yeah, I've got a lot of jerseys. <laughs> I, think you're keep, I think you're keeping the club shop open at this stage. Yeah, I know, I mean, the only downside is I'm funding Levy, but there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stop. You know, ho ho look, hopefully they can wake up in the future and, and get us in a few quality players, you know. But look, you know, as people know, one of my early Spurs memories is having a little um, little um, navy blue jersey with the Hewlett Packard sponsor on it. It was in the 90s, you know, had the cream shorts and the socks to match. But what's your earliest Spurs memory? So for me, I was I was quite late into to liking football. I um decided to play football before actually investing my time into watching football. So I got into football around about 12. I mean, I always liked Tottenham just because dad liked Tottenham. But I think at yeah. the age of 12 was when I really kicked on and thought, actually, I need to invest my time into this club. So I think maybe my earliest memory was probably when my dad got me tickets to go to the training ground to go train with like, it was like a training day type thing. And it was really yeah. funny because I, I turned up at Chigwell and I was the only girl as well. So that was quite funny. <laughs> but um. That's probably my earliest memory is actually physically like playing football like at the training ground, which was pretty sick. That's madness. And uh, how did he come about getting the tickets for that? Um, so it's literally just like an experience day. I don't know whether they still do them now, but it's like for I think it's between ages maybe I think it's ten to fifteen. I think I know they do it yeah. for the ladies team now as well. But yeah, it was just like a training experience day, which was really cool. And then from there, I was like, I'm gonna carry on watching football from now on. So. That's steady. That's that's mad. And uh, are you any good at football yourself? Uh I don't like to blow my own trumpet, but I, I've played at an okay level, if that makes sense. Like I've played at Birmingham City's ground, uh, Walsall. Uh, I've played in cup finals and things. I've, I've gone all over the place, really. So I'm at an okay standard, if that makes sense. Fair play to you. Fair play to you. That that that's good to hear. You know. And look, you know. Look, what made me fall in love with this club is, you know, being in the 90s, being on the terraces as a kid, you know, standing there chanting, singing our team and uh, to victories and stuff like that. And, you know, just any time I went there, you know, you're, you're, you're with people that are of your own kind because, you know, growing up, Spurs fans are very far and few in between unless you're actually in and around Tottenham and around the ground and stuff like that. You know, and, you know, I found everybody to be friendly, everybody to be nice. And the fact that, you know, you're with so many people of your own kind. It, it was absolutely great. But what made you fall in love with this great club? I think it's that as well. I mean, obviously, from doing all these podcasts and things, everybody's so welcoming. And obviously, when I go to games now, it, it's so nice to meet up with those people. And I haven't been able to do it this year. But in previous years, just being able to meet up with people. And I think the fact that we all kind of share the same bond as well, it's, it's so nice. And the fact that I think the main thing that made me fall in Tottenham was obviously going to the training ground, but also because... The watching the likes of Bale I feel like he had something that I was like I'm gonna I want to be like him I want to play football like him because obviously he started as left back then moved to left mid and I was kind of the opposite so I was on the right side doing the same sort of thing so for me I think it was just the bond of all the people and watching Bale players what made me fall in love with Spurs. Yeah uh, and, and do you get to go to the games regularly yourself? Uh, so I try to go as many as I can. Obviously, football myself took a massive presence over actually watching Tottenham play at the ground. But in recent years, I've tried to push myself to go to more games. So I, I think I've, I think the most I've been to is maybe about ten or eleven, like every season sort of thing to try yeah. and keep it. It's so difficult trying to juggle everything. Yeah, well, look, it's more than what I get to. So you know, you, that makes me jealous. You know what I mean? I'd love to get to ten or eleven anyway. 
you know what I mean? So, so fair play to you. Uh, and, you know, what is it about going to the match that, that gets you so excited? Like, you know, for me, as soon as I wake up that morning, I'm raring to go, I can't wait to go. But, but what is it about going to the matches, you know, that that, that, mean, that means so much to you? I think it's the fact that I don't get to go to as many as I'd like to. It's probably the same with you. Like, I want to make the whole day worthwhile. Yeah. And I think, obviously, having the new ground as well now, I feel like that's something you can make of the day. So I, I like get up as early as I can. Obviously, for me, I've got to travel. It's probably the same with you. I, I don't have to travel as far as you, but it's the same sort of thing. Like the whole day is taken up with Spurs and I love it. Like get to the ground, go to the pub, then go to the yeah. ground. I literally get there. I'm probably the first one in the ground as well. Just like say, soaking it all in. Yeah, I'm one of them. Um, I get in there nice and early. Yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah. To sit there and talk everything up. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. I just like to make a massive day of it. I think I was the same at the old ground as well. I just, I like to turn up super early and, to make the day of it really and it's like like I said seeing all the familiar faces as well that I see online that I can actually physically then meet in the ground yeah it's great yeah and of course you know well I haven't actually had the privilege of getting into the new stadium yet I was only up there um when it was being built in that um uh, obviously I've been to the lane I've been to Wembley but you know can you tell us sort of, for someone like me who hasn't been to the new ground really really how how good it is it's just a whole other experience. I mean, when I used to walk out of White Hart Lane, it used to be amazing. And I'll never forget that feeling. But walking out on this, it's just a whole other level. I mean, I've been lucky enough to sit in different places as well. So when you walk out and you just see it, you're like, you're in awe. I just don't understand how amazing it looks. I think once you've experienced it, you'll you'll kind of get what I'm saying. And the fact that it's just a whole other level. And it's the fact everything else behind it as well. Obviously, you've got the nice, um, the long bar You've got the massive yeah. Spurs shop. It's just the whole experience in itself is just on another level, really. Have you got Have you got to sit in that big stand, the big 16 and a half, half thousand that, seater? That's the one I haven't been able to. I've sat everywhere else, like at the front or in the other stand opposite it. I just haven't been able to sit in the wall yet. But it looks immense, especially on match day, especially when I was, I was opposite against the Norwich game. And like, it was just immense the way that it all lit up and things. It was, it was crazy. Yeah, no, when I get over that, that's the stand I have to get into. I have to make sure I'm in there. But, you know, so speaking of stands, you know, obviously it's about going and watching games. You know, there's been some great players over the years. You know, you're, you're talking Ledley King, Modric, Kane, Son. You even go before then, you have um, you have Glenn Hoddle. You obviously have the record appearance holder, Steve Perryman. Um, you know what I mean? You also have the likes of um, Gascoigne, Ozzy Ardiles, players like that. Well, who was your favourite ever player to put on a Spurs jersey? See, I think because of my connection with football and the way he played and how old it is, it's probably Bale. I mean, that that man is something else. I mean, it, it's quite sad that hopefully now we're starting to see him back to his normal stage. But yeah. literally when he came to Spurs, I was like, I can't believe this. Someone pinched me. It was a madness. Just the way that I was able to grow up with him in a sense, because yeah. I was kind of like in my journey in football as well when he was starting his first journey so I think because of that I think it would have to be Bale Yeah and of course he went on that um, I think it was 24 games uh, without a win playing in a Spurs jersey at one stage and, and he finally broke that duck down to Harry Redknapp but no look you know Gareth Bale he, again I grew up I in Gareth Bale as well some of the things he used to do you know the explosiveness he used to do with as well it, it, it was unplayable on his day and, you know, it was sad to see him leave Tottenham, but, you know, he left us with many great memories. And it's good to have him back. It's good to have him back. And hopefully now, you know, he can kick on kick on from here and really add something of value to our team this time around. Yeah, so, you know, Yeah, no, you know, but look, you know, he, he like when he first came in, we all said that, you know, we, we, we had no problem giving him time. We know he's going to have to build up his fitness. And for me now, he's had more than enough time. So now, now I think this time round, it's up to him. And I really hope that he doesn't damage the legacy that he left Tottenham with in, uh, the first time. Um, but, you know, look, as well, we, we've had many great managers. We have Martin Yole, who was the first one to kind of bring us into this new era, new age of Tottenham. You know, and then it was carried on by, um, you know, you had Harry Redknapp there, the first manager to ever get us to the Champions League. What a great squad, great fun it was under him. You have Pochettino. You know, the guy, um, absolute hero. You know, he got us to a Champions League final. He gave us many exciting years. It was the first time I, in my lifetime as a Spurs fan that I went into every game expecting to win. And then, of course, now you have Jose Mourinho here now. A bit early in the days to be maybe saying he's one of your favourite. 
But who's your favourite ever manager to manage Tottenham? I think for me, just because of how I was growing up and things, I think they have to be Harry Redknapp. I think till this day, Harry yeah. Redknapp is still one of my favourite managers. The bloke's so funny. And I think he managed to get something out of the players that I think I hadn't seen in a long while. Like you said, the way he manages to get us to those Champions League um, positions in the table was just crazy. And I always remember, I think it was, I can't remember what game it was, but I always remember it on Sky where they got a massive bucket of water. I think it was Bentley and... Um, I think that was after the City game, after Crouch scored that goal to send us there. And then Bentley yeah, came out and did a the 80s. <laughs> that was the one and he chucked the water all over Harry Redknapp I'll never forget that and I think for me it just kind of instills like that team spirit that I think sometimes we've kind of missed but under Harry Redknapp it was sky high so it'd have to be Harry Redknapp yeah no look Harry Redknapp I, I, I used to love the guy he, he's, he you know you can tell he's just a great man manager you know he, he's funny but you know he done wonders at Tottenham you know he brought in he brought in some good players there you know, he got he got other players to, to kick on, the likes of Garrett Bale, uh, Luke and Modric, players like that. You know what I mean? So for me, I totally enjoyed him as manager. You know, he brought some good days because I used to go outside, you know, all my friends be laughing at me about sports. They're all Liverpool United fans, you know. And when we got to the Champions League, I could finally just go out and give it to them. You know what I mean? Go absolutely nuts. Let, let it all off at them. And, and it was great times, you know. And uh, yeah, no, I, I used to love how he read that. For me, I agree with you. Like you know, I know I know what Potts done for us, but for me, I think Harry Redknapp was was my favourite. You know what I mean? I, I have to say, but you know, look, we've had we've been involved in so many great games. You know, you, you obviously had the the, the comeback against Ajax there with Lucas Morris hat trick to get us to Champions League final. You know, you even go back to under Harry Redknapp. Um, you have the two games against Inter Milan, the one where we were out there, we were losing uh, 4 0 at half time, end up only uh, losing 4 3 with Garrett Bale hat trick, and we brought them back to the lane. And, and you know, Garrett Bale retired a few players that night. You have a couple of um, absolute classics against Arsenal. Of course, you could even count the 6 1 against United this year. But what game will you always remember and why? I think for me, it was at Wembley when we beat Real Madrid 3 1. I think because I was I was lucky enough to be in the centre circle to like shake the champion, uh, the league flag. So that was that yeah. was pretty cool. But I think I don't know, it was just such a crazy night, the fact that we managed to to shut Real Madrid out. Obviously when Ronaldo was in the side as well, to be able to see the likes of like or Ericsson, Deli Alley, they were all on fire that night. And Harry Winks. I think that was the last time I actually <laughs> saw him do some business. So I think for me it would have to be that Real Madrid game where we won three one. It was just a shame that it was at Wembley and not at the lane, but it was an amazing and how did night. you end up how did you end up at the centre circle? Um, I managed to win a competition on Twitter actually. It was with Nissan. So um I managed to get like a, a tracksuit and like a little cap. Um, and then, yeah. yeah, just went out with, like, I think it was the academy players that were doing it as well. So it was me and, like, four other people that were just, like, randomly picked. And then we were out with the academy players doing it. So it was mental. That's class. That's class. Like, I, I, I would love to get to uh, a European game, let alone being able to walk out into the centre <laughs> circle, especially against Madrid. You know what I mean? And did you get to see any of the Madrid get, uh, players in and around the tunnel or anything like that? or? Um, so they obviously I was lucky enough because I was the, um, my head back was towards the tunnel. So as I was shaking yeah. it, I could turn around and see them walk out. And obviously Ronaldo was like right at the front, and like I wasn't fussed that I was close to Ronaldo. I was fussed that I was close to Harry Winks. But <laughs> but really? um, like it was a madness just seeing them come out. It was so it was such a surreal feeling. And obviously at that time you got the Champions League music going off, and then you've got everybody singing over the top of it as well. It was just honestly it was mental. And at uh and then how does that work after that? Do, do, you know, do you get to go to a box to watch the game or did they give you a seat in the stand? Or um, So they gave us a seat in the stand, but it was like in the middle. So it's probably like the best seats you could have sort of thing. So it was like at the centre circle as well. So honestly, it's one of the best games. And obviously to win it as well was just the icing on yeah. the cake, really. Yeah, that, no, that, that that's unbelievable. And of course, your guy, Harry Winks, you know, had a good game that day. One, <laughs> one of his only good games, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, you absolutely adore him. Uh, what, what is it about Harry Winks that you absolutely love, by the way? Uh, it's going to sound really shallow of me, but I think it's because he's come through the system and, like, he's all right to look at, if that makes sense. As shallow as that mm -hmm. sounds, I think the fact, because he's taught them through and through, and I know at the moment his form's dropped off a cliff, but I, I just think that's what it is. and It's a running joke for me and my boyfriend as well that 
I'll get married to Harry Winks and not him. So it's just I've kind of <laughs> tried to keep up the joke, really. <laughs> because I never ever thought Harry Winks would make anybody jealous, but there you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you know, look, there's been some great goals scored in the Spurs shirt over the years. You know, you're talking like, you know, I can remember Luka Modric banging one in against Liverpool. And you also have one Yama screamer against Liverpool. You also have um, an asshole caught a screamer first game of the season against Liverpool. Then, you know, you have Harry Kane's goal against Arsenal, the one where he whipped it in from from, from the acute angle. You also have Danny Rose um, screamer against Arsenal. You know what I mean? But what's your favourite ever goal scored in the Spurs jersey? I mean, you've already said it for me. It was between either the Danny Rose one because of it being his debut and everything, or yeah. it would have to be that Harry Kane goal. I just I don't know how he's managed to like get it in from that angle. It's just yeah. absolutely insane. I think that's the thing that really like wow, how have you managed to do that sort of thing? And obviously, being against who it was as well was a bonus too. Yeah, no, it was it was an absolute madness. You know, what I mean, me personally, I think one of my favourite ever goals would be David Bentley against Arsenal. Um, do you know that that was an absolute screamer and just the audacity to even try it from from where he was, you know what I mean? But no, Kane's goal. I, I honestly couldn't believe to believe he scored from that angle. Like it's something I haven't really seen before, and I don't think you'll ever see again. Just where from where he was, the curl he managed to get it in, the, the, the flight of the ball. It was unbelievable. Look, the keeper had um, absolutely no chance. But look, Holly, you know, for me. The club motto to dare is to do it's a way of life it inspires me to uh, to try things you know what i mean never shut down anything always always give something a go and put your all into it and you know that that's what that's basically what the club means to me you know it's, it, it's a way of life you know you can even say it's a religion sometimes but what does the club mean to you i think for me i just no matter if we win or lose, I know we're in a bit of a rough patch at the minute. I just, I live and breathe it. I just, I can't seem to escape it. I mean, you can tell with all the shirts behind me. I literally, that's that's all I concentrate on. I mean, I go to work and I think Tottenham are playing this evening. It'll get me through the day. I think that's just my motto at the moment. And obviously, in the in the world we're in at the moment, there's not really a lot to keep you going. And I think knowing that Spurs are playing at the weekend or the night after work, it, it just keeps you going sort of thing. So for me, it's just, a way to release stress or things like I know it's stressful watching Spurs, but I always look forward to it regardless of who the competition is. It's it's just something to keep you going. Yeah, a hundred percent. And do you know the way you were saying there you have the club jerseys and all I was just sitting there having a little chuckle to myself. You're like Ty from Arsenal with all the gear and <laughs> gear and everything else. You're probably worse than them. You have the Harry Winks teddy and you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to say I have some sort of idea though, because I was thinking to myself, "Hang on, is he going to say no idea after all the gear?" But um, yeah, I, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I have taken it to a whole nother level. To be honest, I think after like getting involved in YouTube and things, I wasn't so bad before. But it's a bit like I don't know whether you've watched Mike Bassett, England manager, where yeah. he comes home, he comes home after the football, and his wife's like, he "Used to be able to switch the football off, now he's watching every game." It's kind of like me at the moment with Tottenham. Like I just. I can't seem to switch it off at the moment. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm the same. Look, no matter how bad it gets, I, I, I'll never turn it off. I'll always sit here, watch the boys, you know. Um, no matter how bad it gets, I, I, I just can't turn it off. But honestly, I admire your dedication to, to the club and, you know, all, all the gear you have and everything else. Honestly, I you make me, you make, you make me jealous. I, I would love half as much of the gear as you have to do, do with Tottenham. So fair play to you. And of course, you mentioned the YouTube there. So how did you get, how, what made you start YouTube? Um, obviously, you know, plug your YouTube channel as well. And, and how's it going for you? Um, so I used to uh, play FIFA on Twitch and I used to just end up talking about Tottenham. And I was like, at the end of the day, I'm not really enjoying playing FIFA because I ain't got the thumbs to play FIFA anymore. So I thought I might as well just transfer it to YouTube. So rather than playing games, I'll actually just talk about Tottenham really. So yeah, I think it was just something else to do. And obviously it came at the right time as well because of lockdown and things. I was like, I need yeah. to do something or I'm going to go insane. So I think that's the whole reason why I started up YouTube. And yeah, it's going all right. I've just started to do lives as well to get guests on because yeah. I enjoy your show. It's really cool. So I thought I'll give it a crack. I mean, I've never really done a live show before I've always kind of like not hosted one I've always kind of been on the other end answering the yeah. questions so it's a whole new different concept but yeah I'm, I'm really enjoying it it's, it's quite fun 
No, you know, hosting my first one, I was absolutely bricking it. You know, you get so nervous because, like, you know, when you're like, li- when you're not like, you know, you can just turn off the camera, start again, or whatever. You know, you can edit your videos, but when you go live, there's no saving you. You know, if if you fuck up or you forget what you want to talk about, or you know, what I mean, you're screwed. You're just sitting there rolling, people watching you. So I was absolutely bricking it. You know, going live on my first one, but honestly. You know, I was on your channel um, with Matty Hayes there last week, and you know you've done a great job. So, so absolutely keep it up. Make make sure you do. And, and how do you think you've been received out here by Spurs fans so far with the, with, with your channel? Um, I'd like to say all right. I mean, obviously, yeah. I had quite a big following on Twitter to start with, just chatting stuff about Spurs, and I, it's going quite well. I think YouTube is is a big grind, and I think after you've just been doing like recorded videos, I think. Once you make that step to live, I think everything else kind of slots in place sort of thing. But regardless yeah. of who watches and stuff, I, I love going seeing everybody watching stuff. Like I love to go watch other people's channel just because you feel part of that community, if that makes sense. Yeah. I think that's the whole reason why I've done it as well, because it's, an, it's a great way to meet new people that share the same love as you. So, yeah, it's brilliant. I love it. No, 100%. I agree with you. No, I, w- I would never let met, met the likes of yourself. Um, Marcelo, you know, Matt Hayes, um, the lads from We Are Tottenham, Chris Cowling, you know what I mean? I, um, um, Abby Summers, pe- people like that, you know, I, I would never have had the chance to uh, have met people like that or or that without the YouTube channel. And for me, you know, it was a case of the reason why I started mine was, um, you know, look, I started mine at the back end of last season. It was after lockdown. It was um, Newcastle is um, when I first started going on to YouTube. I went on to We Are Tottenham TV and I was doing a, a fan camp, and the reason why I went on is because you know I wasn't I wasn't agreeing with what 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 some of the with a, a lot of what people were saying. So I said, why not come on and give my idea? And you know, it's it's just kind of took off from there. Really, it's it's been mad, and you know, it's been received great by the Spurs community, Spurs fans, and you know what I mean. So it, it's going well. But you know, your channel is growing nicely. You know, just stick at it. You put out great content there. You know what I mean, and now now that you move to lives as well, it's it, it's going to make it a lot easier for you. You know the fact that you're bringing on guests. It's because I find like for me, I think it's harder to do something on my own rather than have someone to talk to. What 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 would you say about that? Yeah, I think it's because obviously I love doing my match reactions. Like it's so much yeah. fun. Like obviously my, <laughs> the opening of my videos are always the fun thing to like record. But it's so difficult with work and everything at the moment to try and edit it if that makes sense whereas if you go yeah. live it's bang it's done I think that's the easiest thing to say but I don't want to give up my match reactions because that's how I started sort of thing but it is true doing lives is so much easier like you say it's nice to get other people's ideas whereas when I do a match reaction it's all very much how I think the game went or how I think yeah. it has been getting insight from other people sort of thing so it's a good combination to have the both I think yeah it is and you know a lot of people think it you know it's just a matter of a fact of sticking on a camera and away you go but there's not you know you have to get to learn how to like make your thumbnails and edit videos do intros and stuff like that were you were you always naturally good at that or 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 was it something you learned along along your way um so it was a bit of both really i mean obviously doing twitch i was okay at like chatting to people and trying to find connections and things but i think I got really friendly with the Blue Boys Network who support Everton. So they yeah. kind of showed me the ropes, how to make my thumbnails better and things like that. So it's just another thing as well. You, it's not also Spurs fans. I've, I've also connected with like other YouTube channels, which is really nice as well. Because like you say, I never would have made that connection if I hadn't have done YouTube. So for me, YouTube, like the journey has been, has been really fun. And to be honest with you, as much as it is nice for people to subscribe, I think it's also for me. I just It's a nice therapeutic way yeah. to get your stuff out really if that makes sense no I, I fully agree with you like I said you know when I started mine it was about me getting my point of view out there my say out there my, my word out there so so I, I fully agree with you you know and you know th- thanks very much for that insight on, on basically how you became a YouTuber and, and how you think it's going because you know you 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 also do this I, I'm, I'm working a full-time job so I don't know how you ha- how, how you have the time at times you know because I find myself flat out most days with 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 my channel, with doing my videos and going on and helping other people. So, you know, I don't know how you have the time to be able to run a channel and do a full time job. So, fair play to you, credit to you, and you're absolutely smashing it. You know what I mean? It, it's it's great to see to see women out here doing their thing because, you know, look, 
I'm not stupid, you know. We all see it, you know. They get they tend to get a lot a lot more grief just because you know people think that women don't know what they're talking about when it comes to football, which is obviously is not true. You know what I mean? And you're a testament to that. So fair play to you and just keep it going. You know what I mean? No matter what people say, just keep going. That's what I'd say. And you know, this is a question that I really do like to finish on for me. For me, it's a personal thing, is you know, and, and it's great to get 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 the memory out there. But for me, like you know, my 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 most cherished memory is being able to bring the old lad to the White Hart Lane after a fifteen year exile, because of course, like you know, I grew up in Croydon, but we moved back to Ireland, and um, you know, so w when I was living in Croydon, I used to get to go every week. But when I moved back to Ireland, you know, I hadn't been there in about fifteen years, so it was it was my old lad's fiftieth birthday, and I was able to. You know, get the money together, bring him over, and you know, just just see him enjoy himself at the game, and, and get there once again. And that, and that was in uh, 2016. Um, it was against Swansea. We ended up winning two one. The year we were going for a title chase. But you know, what's your most cherished Spurs memory? I mean, there's a few, but I think the one that stands out for me is when my dad took me for my birthday to watch um, us play Crystal Palace at the Old Lane. And it was the first time we've actually kind of gone together because obviously football for me took a massive presence over actually watching it. So for me to go with my dad, it was really nice. And the fact that it was Sonny's debut game as well was something I'll always remember because of how far he's come now in a Spurs shirt. So it was just really nice to be able to go up with him. Obviously, he felt quite nostalgic because living in Southampton, it, it's been quite difficult up for, for him to go back to games and things like that. So... For us yeah. to be able to go there and obviously win the game as well. And yeah, it was just a whole a whole massive nostalgic memory for him, but also one for me to make memories as well. Because obviously since then I've been to as many Spurs games as I can get to. So I think that's the, the biggest memory for me. Yeah, no, that that's that's a lovely memory, you know, especially the fact that you know, you basically have that bond with your father over Tottenham and you know, it's something that that, that can never be broken. It's it's a bond that also you know, I believe without having a club to bond over, it's a bond that probably would would never be made. Do you know what I mean? Because football and, and Tottenham just whoever, whoever you're connected with just gives you that weird bond. But you were mentioning Palace there, going um, the Palace. I actually went to a game at Wembley. It was Tottenham v Palace, and uh, it was the game that Sun scored, and we ended up winning one nil. Um, but then Palace fans, they're they're noisy. They they go for ninety minutes. They stand there, they beat that drum, you know, and, and they make noise for ninety minutes. I was actually surprised with how vocal they were. Yeah, they are pretty insane. I think we sat opposite the Palace fans, and they were giving it all the hand language, all the swear, and all that. And you could actually hear them over us singing. It was a madness. So yeah, they are very very vocal. Yeah, they are. And, and you know that drum that they do beat, it gives me a headache. I felt like walking in amongst them and taking it off them, you know what I mean? Because, as well, they were embarrassing me because, you know, we, the Spurs fans were really quiet. I don't know what it was about Wembley, but it just wasn't the same. It was, I thought it was very quiet. And, you know, you have the few thousand Palace fans there having a the time in their life. You know, it, it was a bit embarrassing. I was sitting there, I was like, lads, this is a home ground. Why aren't we out singing them? But, you know, it's just the way it goes sometimes. But, no, look, you know, thanks very much for giving up your time coming on and doing this, Holly. Um, I really do appreciate you. You shared some great memories there. Um, do you want to give your channel a plug and, and let people know where they can find you? Uh, yeah, so you can literally just find me at my name, Holly Agarbar. I tried to keep it all the same, and then I realised my surname's a bit of a mess. But, regardless, you can just jump over to my channel and... Do what you like, really. Like I just talk Tottenham, so if that's what people fancy, just go for it. But thanks again, David, for, for having me on. I've, I've really enjoyed this. No, no problem at all. You know, it's been something we've been planning for a while to try and get you on. So I'm absolutely delighted that you could take the time out of your busy week and give it up for someone like me to, to come and do the story. You know, I, I really do appreciate it. But not only me, it's for everyone else out there that watches the Harris Army. You know, you're giving up your time for them. So I'm sure they'll really appreciate it as well. And uh, no, honestly, don't get over to the channel, do whatever you like. Get over to the channel, and make sure you smash the subscribe button. She really deserves it. She puts out fantastic content. She's brilliant. I know I know us in the Spurs community, we we, we really enjoy her content, her happy go lucky personality. So thank you very much um, for giving up your time. And I hope you enjoyed this week's show. If you did, make sure you smash that like, make sure you smash that subscribe button. A big thank you to Holly for giving up her time, for coming on, sharing your stories. 
thank you to the Harris Army and anyone else for tuning in. And of all, as always, in Jaws we trust. Come on, you Spurs. Everywhere we go.